in Kenya. Legislators have summoned the cabinet secretaries for petroleum and energy over the apparent elimination of a fuel subsidy scheme introduced back in April. The Petroleum Secretary, John Munoz, and his energy counterpart, Charles Kiter, are expected to appear before the House next week, Tuesday. Now, the scrapping of these subsidies, in effect, took place on the 15th of September. Kenya's energy regulator has since March kept diesel and kerosene prices pretty much unchanged at around 98 and 89 cents a litre, respectively. Petrol prices also unchanged at around $1.15 since June. But the removal of the subsidy this week sends fuel prices to record levels. The price of petrol is up about 6% to roughly uh, $1.20 a litre in the Kenyan capital. It's even higher, around $1.40 a litre elsewhere in the further frontiers of the country. Now, the cost is set to rise even further with the introduction of a near 5% excise duty on fuel products from the 1st of October. Right then, so let's explore the reactions to this latest developments in fuel pricing in East Africa's largest economy. Ivo Tieno is a principal in charge of Africa's strategy at Standard Charter Bank. She joins us now live um, on the program. So Eva, let's, let's start with a bit of context here because Brent crude prices peaked at about $147 a barrel back in July 2008. Prices now around half of that. So if we take inflation into account, are Kenyan consumers paying more for fuel now compared to what they were paying back in 2008? Uh, thank you very much, Rama. Absolutely, you're absolutely right on that uh, with regards to the average Kenyan paying higher on fuel prices but compared to back in 2008 when we saw international oil prices at almost double the rate that we are seeing now. One of the reasons could be because of the tax and levies that are being imputed into the oil price, the local oil prices, and that uh, resulting in a significantly higher figure. And let's remember that the fiscal position for the country has changed in the last, uh, say, 13 years now, with debt levels having increased uh, dramatically. Now that Kenya is part of an IMF program, uh, it's also in the IMF's best interest to help um, the country meet its fiscal consolidation targets and its fiscal deficit targets as well. And that, unfortunately, may come at a cost of higher taxes and that going into the, some of the prices like fuel. So a popular argument that we've been hearing this week and we'll probably be hearing it next week as well is that since taxes make up about half of the price of the pump, Cutting those would be ideal, but as you point out, Kenya's running sky-high fiscal deficits over 8% in some cases consistently for a couple of years. So if I understand you correctly, cutting taxes right now is not a viable option, is it? No, and unfortunately it's not. Just because of the fact that Kenya also has some uh, targets to meet on the fiscal side. As an average Kenyan, I mean, we've become particularly concerned with the rate at which uh, debt levels are getting accumulated. And for Kenya to be able to stabilize its debt levels or find it, find a level that's, uh, you know, stable, it would require that it reduces on the, on the amount that it borrows. For it to reduce on the amount that it borrows, uh, which we also know as fiscal deficits, um, it would have to raise revenue so that it can reduce that budget gap. And uh, that's one of the ways uh, of reducing this budget gap is by raising revenues. And that's where we've seen even a uh, doubling of the VAT on fuel products that came through um, in the recent past. So um, this is um, one of the reasons as to why we are seeing uh, one of the highest prices in, in a decade in as much as fuel prices now international fuel prices now are half of what they were back in 2008. Okay so isn't there though a, a big legal question mark around the the way we use this petroleum development levy to subsidize retail prices yet if you read the law that actually covers that sort of thing there's a there's a paragraph that basically says that the money raised from that levy should be used for the development of common facilities for the distribution and testing of all products. There's, there's literally nothing about subsidies written into the law. 
I would say, and uh, I'd, I'd say that I'm also not a legal expert on that, but from an economic perspective, I would assume that the government had looked at ways in which they could introduce this subsidy back in March. And uh, one of the ways could be through um, this uh, development fund that you, you've referred to. And uh, we also, if we take a step back, the Kenya government is not um, akin to re uh, having subsidies in, in, the, in the country or in the, in the policies. This is something that's fairly new. So given that uh, the Kenya government had put in place a subsidy from March that had helped uh, cushion Kenyans for some time, uh, and then removing that subsidy, I would think that there may be some, would say, greater forces that may have um, resulted in that. And uh, one of the key uh, reasons that I would look at as an economist would be this IMF program that Kenya is part of. Um, remember that Kenya has got reviews that it has to do every six months, and it for it to get the disbursements that are at relatively concessional terms. So for it to be able to successfully do these semi-annual reviews, then it also needs to meet some of the reforms that it had agreed with the IMF, and one of them being um, fiscal deficit targets and those reducing over time so that Kenya can be able to stabilize its debt position. But even, even, if, even if we take the IMF out of the equation, right, just as a matter of fiscal prudence, I mean, Kenya can't afford to be providing these subsidies, can it? At this point, I think, um, given that the levels have risen, the public debt levels have risen, then in that case, it would be prudent for the country to look at ways in which they could cushion um, the average person from the rise in fuel prices. And unfortunately, the options are limited uh, just because the fiscal position of the country had been reduced even before the pandemic because of the rise in the debt levels. So I, I would say at this point in time, it's a bit difficult to provide uh, subsidies in an environment where uh, you're trying to contend with uh, very high debt levels. All right, just for the benefit of our viewers elsewhere, the reason why I keep coming back to this debt level issue is because if you look at the debt service that the Kenyan uh, government is spending, the amount of money it's spending on debt service year in, year out, it's roughly 40 to 50% uh, of effective revenues. Um, one last question for you, Eva. So Kenya is experimenting with, uh, or rather has experimented with price controls for 11 years now. Is it time to drop them? Okay, so, um, and, and, it, and it could be price controls not only in the fuel uh, or petroleum sector, but in other sectors of the economy, and we've seen uh, them dropping in other sectors of the economy, and possibly that's a conversation to be had with the, the other stakeholders, so broader stakeholders to come through. I mean, there's been some criticism that maybe when these price controls came through, uh, the relevant stakeholders had not been included in the discussions. Um, but at this point in time, you know, would say that it needs a broader stakeholder participation just to make sure that all the relevant voices are heard um, so that if indeed these price controls are continuing, then it's with the, the right um, perspective, perspectives having been taken into, into mind. Um, but uh, from what we've seen, at least in the, la in the recent past, in the face of um, higher oil prices or international oil prices rising, it becomes a bit more difficult to administer price controls. All right, we'll leave it there for the time being. Ivo Tiano from Standard Chartered. Thank you very much.